Hi, this is Rafiq Suleiman, and you are watching Cloud Simplified. Hi, everyone, and welcome to another lesson from the Cloud Practitioner Express. And in this lesson, we're going to continue what we started in the last two lessons, and that's the section of AWS networking. So if you remember, in the first lesson, we introduced the concept of VPCs, and then we spoke about public subnets, private subnets, and then internet gateway. And in the lesson after, this is where we spoke about a very specific use case, how I can connect my physical on-premise data center to the cloud, and I can do this either while I'm doing migration or if I want to adopt the model of the hybrid cloud. And this is now lesson number three to carry on with what we started. And here we're going to explain a very important concept of networking security, how I can secure my VPC. And in order for us to understand, we're going to see in this lesson two important services. We're going to talk about something called network access control lists and something called security groups. Let's see how the traffic flows. So if I have a client and this client is coming from the internet and this client, for example, wants to access a certain EC2 instance server that I have, we're going to see the client will start by sending the traffic and it will start by entering. If you remember, this is how I enter my uh, subnet. This is like the door, if you remember from the previous lessons, how I can enter inside my VPC. So the internet gateway, this is the entry point. And then we're going to see, as I mentioned, we will pass by two firewalls or we'll pass by two lines of defenses. The first line of defense, this is what we call network access control list. And network access control list, this is to protect my entire subnet. So when the traffic is coming to my network access control list, traffic will be inspected. And if this traffic is permitted, then the traffic will be allowed. Now, if the traffic is allowed, this means I am inside my subnet. But then in order for me to access the server or the EC2 instance, I will pass by another line of defense, another virtual firewall, which we call the security group. So again, I go through this security group to be inspected. And if I have this traffic allowed, then this traffic will reach eventually my EC2 instance. So let's take it step by step. Let's start by network access control lists and see what are the characteristics. The first thing that we have on what we call NACLs or network access control list, this is to allow or deny certain traffic on the subnet level, very, very important. This is like a virtual firewall. This is my first line of defense to either be permitted inside the subnet or to be completely denied. And then we're going to see that each subnet in your VPC must be associated with a network access list. That's a must. And if you didn't associate a network access list, what happens? it will be associated with what we call a default network access list. So by default, we have what we call a default network access list that is associated to your VPC. And what is the behavior of this default? The behavior is allow all. So the behavior of the default network access control list is to allow all kind of traffic. Very good. Now let's zoom in a bit more. And let's understand a very important concept here. Network access control lists, they are stateless. Very, very important. What do I mean by stateless? Let me explain. Now, if the client is sending traffic, as we explained, in order to be allowed inside the subnet, this traffic will be inspected by the network access list. And according to my inbound rules, now this is going to be allowed if I allowed it in the inbound. So traffic now will be going into my EC2 instance 
and here I'm assuming that the security group allows it. I don't want to focus in this example on the security group, but let's assume this is allowed. So traffic is reaching my EC2 instance. Now the EC2 instance or the server is replying back. Pay attention please here. Now when the server is replying back, now this will again be inspected by the network access control list and this is what we call the outbound rules. Why? Because network access control lists, they are stateless. And stateless means I don't keep track. I don't remember. So whatever I allowed when I am going inside, when the traffic now is being, uh, if this is, I have a reply back from the server. Now I need to explicitly allow the outbound traffic or otherwise this traffic is going to be denied. So for the network access list, because they are stateless, I need to allow it in both directions. I need to allow it in the inbound and I need to go and allow it on the outbound as well so that traffic will be allowed and traffic will be sent out. Very important to understand this first part of the network access list that they are stateless. They don't keep track. Now talking about security groups, if you remember, security groups, as we explained, this is the second line of defense after the network access list. So it controls the traffic that is allowed by the network access list to reach my resources, like what? Like EC2 instances or like RDS instances as well. And then by default, the new security groups that we have by default, the new security group will only allow the outbound traffic. What does that mean here? This is only allowing traffic initiated from the EC2 instance itself. But if the traffic is initiated from the client from the outside, by default, this traffic is denied. By default, this traffic is denied. So you must add rules to enable any inbound traffic. To enable any traffic initiated from the outside or initiated from clients coming from the internet. Otherwise, traffic is going to be denied. And another big differentiation between the network access list and the security group, security groups now, they are stateful. If you remember, network access list, they were stateless. Now security groups, they are stateful. What does that mean? Let's see. If I have a client communicating with my EC2, as we understood, it will pass by the knuckle and let's say this traffic was allowed and then it will come to my security group. I will inspect the traffic here and if this traffic is allowed, now stateful means I will remember. So when the traffic is going to the EC2 and the EC2 now is responding back, not initiating new traffic, is responding back, when this traffic comes to the security group, the security group will remember, ah, I have seen this traffic before and I have already allowed this traffic. This traffic coming now is not a new initiated traffic. This is coming as a reply to the already initiated traffic, which I already remember. So what happens here? Automatically, this is going to be allowed. So it's not like the access list. I need to allow it in the inbound, and I need to allow it again when it is leaving the subnet. The security groups are stateful, which means now I can only allow it in one direction. And if there is a reply back, the reply back will be automatically permitted. So it will be permitted back and then it will reach, it will reach my client. With this, we finished a very important lesson talking about how I can secure my VPC talking about two very important services, network access control list to secure my entire subnet, and that is stateless, security group, the second line of defense to secure my EC2 instance, and if you remember, security groups, they were stateful. So I hope now this concept is 100% clear. If you have any questions, please 
put it for us in the comments. Very happy to answer any of your questions. With this, thank you so much and I hope to see you in the future lessons.